Hello world, it's Birdo Prey 5 Kapla, and welcome to my review of Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 1 Episode 4 Memento Mori. If you don't know what Memento Mori means, neither did I. Quick Google, and it's Latin for Remember, Everyone Has to Die. This is, this is new, episodic, supposedly, uh, lighthearted Trek. No, no. Okay, you don't make a, a title, remember, everyone has to die, as, as, as a, uh, title for a TV show where everybody looks forward to this future. I don't look forward to that future. I've acknowledged, yes, I have to die. I ironically am wearing my red shirt today with no, had no idea what the title of today's show even was going to be. But yeah, if you wear a red shirt, you've admitted that death is inevitable in the Trek universe. It should just be titled Red Shirt, but it's not. Uh, we can get a previously on so we can be reminded about how uh, our security chief, La'an Nulian Singh, uh, had an experience with the Gorn and why people know about the Gorn, why other people have seen the Gorn. She's seen the Gorn. She's seen Gorn ships. Hell, we find out she even knows how to read Gorn. Meanwhile, Captain Kirk, who is another 10, 15 years away from fighting the Gorn for the first time on Cestus III, hasn't been taught any of this. Hasn't been taught any of this. Captain Pike himself is going to fight Gorn ships, and it's never going to get put into a Federation data bank. They're going to play this off as these are just, um, the Gorn are just, uh, monsters that nobody's ever met in real life, uh, that they're already all over Federation space at this point in the timeline. How do they just go away? And then what? Then they, then they decide to, let's put a, a colony or the, near Gorn space and then the colony gets destroyed and let's forget we ever saw the Gorn. It makes no sense, but whatever. Anyway, I am getting the, the names of people. The engineer is, uh, Hammer. Hammer. He's a Anar, which is the sub, subspecies of Andorians. Uh, even though he's supposed to be blind, uh, on Wikipedia, they say his character can actually see, uh, from one eye. He has some sight. I don't know if they mean the actor or the character, and I don't, I don't really care. Um, the problem with this episode, it's long. It's relatively boring. It's much darker than the previous episodes in tone and physically color. It's shot much darker than the previous episodes. And, uh, they have at least two unforgivable sins. The first, I will tell you later, because I, I don't want to spoil it. The second is that they are making the exact same mistakes that they made with Star Trek Discovery uh, and Star Trek Picard, and that is they forgot what they wrote last week or even last time, even though they showed us previously on, they just forgot. Uh, then the, the, the main problem this week, uh, and I don't know how this gets past editing, is that uh, a week or two ago, uh, or maybe it was the first episode, yeah, it was the first episode, uh, the security officer, Lon, 
Lan Nulian Singh said that under no circumstances would she be sedated. Okay, under no circumstances would she be sedated. Then last week, she was sedated without issue, or possibly she wasn't sedated, but the uh, nurse chapel maybe secretly didn't give her the sedation, even though everybody on board this ship was supposed to be sedated, except, except Una, who, aka number one. Now this week, Una is the one who says, or they tell Una, uh, you know, you're okay with being sedated. And Una says, yes, well, if I have to be. And this makes no sense. Because at no point did Una not say she couldn't be sedated. However, last week, we found out Una has genetic manipulation. So it's very possible she can't physically be sedated. Maybe that's why. Uh, but I think they physically screwed up the history or the background of Lan and Una. Why they screwed it up? That's, that's, your guess is as good as mine. I suspect uh, they forgot which character is actually an augment. Uh, or maybe they just Una, Lan, they were too close. I don't know. Uh, maybe the fact that Pike calls her his acting number one. Uh, that was upsetting. Um, we'll get to that. But anyway, so the, this episode is about resupplying a colony. They get to the colony and nobody's answering the phone. Uh, then a ship flies, on, flies in. It turns out it's what's left of the colonists. They're on a, uh, they're on some type of, I don't know, drilling ship or something, uh, or cargo ship. They don't have any fancy, uh, no fancy, uh, sensors. They don't have fancy sensors. Uh, so the Enterprise is a much more powerful ship. Uh, they don't have, uh, oh, okay. It's a, it's a mining ship. It's, it's, me it's meant to uh, hold radioactive. Why? Since when in track do they ever hold radioactive materials? Uh, you know, I thought that was something that dies in the 20, 20th or 21st century. But anyway, so they've got highly radioactive material. So the hull is designed to be extra thick. So it can't, you can't beam people out of the ship. So instead of beaming people out, they connect one of the uh, emergency plank ways that we saw in Star Trek Discovery uh, season two. So anytime you remind me of Star Trek Discovery, that's another big negative for your show. Um, but anyway, they put out this plank way, and as it turns out, um, that was a mistake. Uh, however, um, before we get to that problem, uh, La'an happens to see a little girl running past her, and she's yelling about monsters. And she's like, did you see who took, and she's like, the monsters who took my father. She's like, did you see him? And she's like, I couldn't see him, it just makes noises. And then she does a clucking noise, like cluck, cluck, cluck. And Laan immediately recognizes it. And she's like, uh-oh. She's like, red alert, bridge alert. Call the captain. Scan the, scan the area for cloaked EM or whatever. Signature. And Laan is like, I'm not sure yet. She's sure. It's, it's the Gorn. It's the Gorn. So, oh, it, it was a, it was a, Spock does the sensor, it was a hologram. So the Gorn now attack via holograms. Um, they can't raise shields because the emergency plankway is, is deployed to the ship. For some reason, 
they didn't pull everybody onto the enterprise. So, um, number one physically pulls Leon out of the plank way. They're going to have to put the shields up, and which means people are going to die. And you know, um, Pike doesn't like Pike doesn't like anybody dying, which nobody wants to see people die. But to actually have to be ordered to kill people to save others, save the lives of others, it's really not what he wants to be doing. Uh, so at this point, we're up to the opening credits, and Pike is doing the strange new worlds to boldly go where no one has gone before. We got a, a nice, a nice picture of the Enterprise flying around, clouds and dust. Um, so anyway. Um, Lon is, uh, Lon gets injured, uh, number one gets injured, uh, number one, uh, tells everybody she's okay, though, don't worry about her, just worry about Lon, uh, the little girl, I don't know if we ever find out what happened to her, the mother's dead, the mother's dead, the little girl, we don't really find out what happens to her immediately. Um, they beam down to the planet and they start searching and all they find are some bodies and a dog. There's a dog in a house. At one point, the dog jumps up and starts barking at the people in there. Uh, the rescue team were in their, uh, their outfits and, uh, you know, it scares everybody. They jump backwards, but then they laugh it off and they keep going. Um, basically there's nobody left on the colony. The only survivors were the people who survived, uh, in that, in that ship and also survived the uh, explosion after the shields came up. Uh, number one is saying she'll be okay. So, number one says, I told the captain, and you're right, they need you, just go to the bridge. She orders Lon to the bridge. Uh, the captain's already, already started fighting the Gorn ship. Um, also, this episode, uh, Hema and Uhura are going to do more bonding. Hema wants, uh, Hema has been telling Uhura how it's going to be very hard to please him, but Uhura obviously is always one step ahead and she knows what to say whenever he has a question. Meanwhile, Laan comes to the bridge. She's like, we've got to leave. You can't stay. And, and Pike is like, I know, but I can't leave people behind. And finally, Lon, like, look, it's the Gorn. It's the Gorn. And it's like, they basically are using the Gorn like TNG and Picard use the board. Like, oh shit, it's our biggest, baddest evil people out there. Anyway, Lon is like, this is how the Gorn did it. And she remembers now. It's what they do first. They run down your resources. And Pike is like, oh, that's a smart tactic. Yeah. So he's like, she's like, Captain, we have to find cover, regroup, and you have to trust me. We have to level the playing field. Oh, by the way, it's also Starfleet Remembrance Day. So just for this day each year, you not only wear your badge, but you also wear a separate badge for all previous ships you've ever served on. Now, La'an doesn't want to, uh, refuses at this point to wear any badge, badges for her previous ship because her previous ship was a colony ship that got killed by the Gorn. 
Um, I get it, but all day. And so this entire episode all takes place within one solar day because by the end of the episode, Lan finally puts on her her medal commemorating uh, the ship she was on after she gets mentally healed. Uh, Lieutenant Ortega's is basically, um, I don't say nervous, but every, every order she's given, she's questioning, uh, the Gorn ship, it's firing on the Enterprise. It looks exactly like the Gorn ship looked, or, you know, I don't even think we saw a Gorn ship in Arena. Uh, if we did, uh, it's the same Gorn shape, sh uh, shape ship. Um, in fact, we're going to see a second Gorn ship uh, by the end of this episode. So, how, how uh, the ship in Arena was unrecognized makes no sense. Because uh, this Enterprise has scanned at least two Gorn ships. And they would be in its data banks from now forward. So, Hammer, Hammer. Hammer, 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 the uh, Anar and Ahura were in the main cargo bay. Hammer broke his hand because uh, they took a torpedo from the Gorn to the cargo bay. And now something in the cargo bay is about to critically explode. They've got like 20, 30 minutes. Uh, the explosion would consume the Enterprise in an atomic blast. So Hema and Uhura are going to be there repairing the ship. Meanwhile, Dr. Uh, Mbenga is saying that everything in sickbay is offline. He's stabilized patients, but without medical assistance, no one's getting out of there. It's just a triage. Uh, there's been nine confirmed deaths. Um, and it decimated, decimated, not, uh, you know, Darren's going to be upset because he's using decimated as in destroyed most of and not the technical destroyed 10% of uh, that their medical supplies have been decimated. And unless they get more supplies, people are going to die. Okay. It is what it is. The writing... Yesterday, I watched on Deep Space Nine Wednesday. It's only a paper moon. The writing for that episode was far and above anything I've seen in any new track since Discovery. Far and above. In fact, far and above even the JJ movies. It was just an episode that I've seen in my life at least 20 plus times at this point in my life. And the thing is, I would watch it another 20 back to back today if I wanted to. And I would choose to watch it over Discovery, over Picard, and even over these first few episodes of Lower Decks. And it's true. Lower, uh, not Lower Decks, I'm sorry. Strange New Worlds. It's true. Strange New Worlds has not been the worst series I've come across, or even the second worst. But, it is in no way, it is in no way a, a great show. It's in no way great track. This is, Okay, sci-fi. It is not good sci-fi. It's not even good track. And it certainly isn't great track. If somebody's telling you that this is great track, ask them what, what, what is wrong. What, 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 are they sick? Are they ill? Perhaps. Um, 
listen, if you like it, again, I understand. I so want it to. But it's it just, it's getting harder. It's getting harder. Lon is now telling everybody, and she's giving them the reality, is that, listen, lots of people have lived to see the Gorn. They just don't live long enough to tell anybody about it. So, Pike tells everybody to be vigilant and be creative. And we'll, we'll get survived this by working together. Of course, he only tells that to Lon, Spock, Ortega, and himself. There's no giant crew to speak to. Just three, three other people. And, you know, Lon says nobody cares about her feelings. So she doesn't waste time having any. He's like, the crew. She's like, you know damn well, I don't care what the crew thinks. And so Pike now tells her, yeah, but the if the crew don't think they're going to survive, they're not going to. Uh, now, this is a good speech, but it's like, I've heard it. We've all heard this before. Uh, Lon says, listen, I'm not going to lie to the crew, uh, but she'll, she'll, she'll maybe be nicer about it. So he's like, there's nothing on the Gorn on the official record. Is there anything you might know? Anything that might help? And she's like, memories of what happened are inhibited. They're just fragments. Even at this point, I was yelling, mind meld, mind meld, mind meld. And it's going to take her another 20 minutes to figure out what she needs is a fucking mind meld. Unfortunately, at that point, when they're in a shuttle together and she minds melds with Spock, it's her, it's number one, it's her choice. It's her decision. She, she, she gets Spock alone and she says, I know your people can do this. And Spock is like, hey, this is a dangerous thing. It's no joke. And she's like, I don't care. Do it anyway. He's like, okay. And then Spock gets to see her brother sacrifice himself so that she might live, which was, you know, very nice. But then Spock totally bails or falls apart because she hears Michael fucking Burnham. She hears Michael Burnham in Spock's mind meld. Michael Burnham is calling out to Spock about how much she loves him. And, and La'an is like, oh, you lost a sister, didn't you? She's like, your sister died for you, didn't she? No, she didn't. His sister died because, actually, she didn't die. His sister went to the future because she's an idiot. Their whole fucking ship jumped a thousand years to the future to defeat an enemy they already defeated before they jumped. So it was a lie. It was a lie. Michael Burnham didn't kill herself for, didn't sacrifice herself for Spock. Although Spock says, yeah, she did. And Spock is like, I'm not comfortable with this mind meld going any further. So Spock pussies out and ends the mind meld because Lon might find out more over his classified sister. Earlier in this episode, in fact, it might be just about now, um, Pike, uh, has, Pike asks La'an, he's like, well, do you agree with what I'm, uh, I forget the word. Pike makes a decision, and, but instead of, instead of going through with the decision, Pike asks his acting number one, who's La'an, He's like, do you, do you agree with my decision, number one? And Lon is like, sure. And only after getting number one's approval does he actually implement 
what he decided uh, to do, which is like a big fuck you to fans. To, to I mean, I can conceive that I remember uh, once in a while Captain Cisco, um, Captain Cisco would ask Jadzia Dax, you know, hey old man, am I am I crazy here? Are are we up? Ro- ro- are we barking up the wrong tree? You know, what do you think? And she would, she would say, she would give her input. But that's just the way things worked uh, then. Uh, I don't ever remember Kirk asking uh, Spock for permission to do something. I certainly don't remember the true, the real Captain Picard asking Riker permission to do something. I don't even remember uh, Janeway, although she might have. She might have asked Chakotay once, but I think she was asking Chakotay if she was crazy or not, and Chakotay was nice enough to tell her she wasn't, even though she clearly is. Uh, And Archer certainly didn't ask to Paul for permission to do something. Uh, so it's kind of it's kind of a shitty move for Pike to have to ask not even Una, not even Una, but the second in line Una, the acting Una, the acting number one for for permission to do something. So anyway, at this point, we finally find out the Gorn have a bigger ship. They chase them, the the Gorn chased them into a nebula, and then of course in the nebula was a uh, a brown dwarf, and next to the brown dwarf is a black hole. So they're in this nebula, the weight, the, the pressure on the hull is so immense that it's it's you can hear inside the enterprise that that it's getting louder it's starting to crush the ship it sounds like you're on a submarine that's that's getting deeper than it was ever supposed to go um but pike is like well whatever happens to us will also happen to the gorn and he thinks that the enterprise was built stronger than the gorn ship so eventually, the Gorn ship will dis- be destroyed. The Enterprise won't be. And he's right, obviously. Uh, it works. So we get two ships of the Gorn ultimately destroyed. One just by the pressure. Second, uh, I told you earlier that Laan knows how to speak. She knows how to speak Gorn. She doesn't know it offhand. But that's what they do. Uh, their mind meld, and Spock finds in her brain that indeed uh, she does know how to say some basic words. So uh, she broadcasts light onto the Gorn vessel to make one vessel think the other vessel is signaling that humans have uh, come on board, have boarded the ship, and are attacking. So the Gorn, she knows the Gorn will kill the weaker Gorn because, you know, uh, the the strongest, whatever, whatever that is from biology, only the strongest will survive. So if you tell a Gorn ship that a different Gorn ship has been taken over by humans, of course they're going to destroy the Gorn ship. So, one Gorn ship destroys another, and another Gorn ship is destroyed by pressure. So, the only Gorn ship left, the third Gorn ship, is, of course, the biggest Gorn ship. And uh, never before seen, I believe, Gorn ship, and maybe in a game, uh, not on TOS, for sure, or the animated series. Um, and, uh, yeah. 
So it is what it is. Uh, Dr. Oh, we're told that the lower decks are getting critical. They've got to, they, they were supposed to, they ordered the evacuation of the lower decks, which are decks like 15 through 20, uh, like 15 minutes ago. They're still not empty. And they've got to close it off now because they're about to buckle from the pressure. And it's Asian Kyle, the transporter chief, running and one other guy falls in front. And now the guy that fell, he, 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 Asian Kyle leaves him behind. Asian Kyle leaves him behind. And there's a deck, the deck collapsed. The entire deck collapsed. And Asian Kyle looks back through the doors and sees his poor friend crushed to death. And now they're, now they're approaching a critical hull failure. The fact that an entire deck just got wiped out was already sounds like a critical hull failure. So Ky Pike is like, do you think they're going to take us prisoner number one? If they think they're going to board the Enterprise, they're going to have a fight on their hands. He tells everybody to battle stations like he's going to fight the Gorn right here, right now. Uh, except he says, okay, stop. And here's where the first Gorn ship actually collapses due to pressure. It can't take, it can't take the pressure. It just it collapses in on itself, and it explodes. It appears the Gorn vessel couldn't withstand the atmosphere. It's imploded. So now Pike is like, oh, that was my plan all along. Oh. So when the Gorn hunt, they are relentless. They don't stop. She's like, yep, they don't. So he's like, Mr. Spock keeps scanning for the other two ships. Anyway, it's a very dark episode. So now, uh, Nurse Chapel, she's so far behind. Like, there's a, there, right, Nurse Chapel's wearing civilian uniform because she's not, she's not a member of, of the med spay, but she's being used like she is. Why, why not use your own doctors, Dr. Mbenga? It's like, she's the only doctor. So, Number one is like, what are you not telling me? And uh, Nurse Chow was like, we need to sedate you. There's only enough plasma left for her. And they have to give it to her by IV. Like, how else would you give it to her? Would you beam it into her bloodstream? The only way you can give people more blood or more plasma is by IV in the 23rd century. That doesn't change. I mean, it shouldn't hurt. It shouldn't be painful. Why are they giving her gas? Why are you sedating somebody for a plasma? I mean, it's not a painful, even now, even in the 21st century, you can get a blood transplant. It doesn't hurt at all. I've had like 12 that I was awake for. And another went double that. I was in a coma. It doesn't hurt. You don't need gas to get plasma. I, I don't know. Anyway, this is where it's like they, they think number one is the one who told them I'm never to be sedated. But it wasn't number one. It was La'an. And it doesn't make any sense that they would be awkward. It shouldn't be awkward. Number one took the sedation. There's no reason she can't be sedated. And La'an asks Spike, asks Spock if he ever play, speaks in plain English. He should just say, I am. But he re, re, restates his, his thing. He's like, we can't even send a probe. Uh, it's one hour and 32 minutes before they can't escape the black hole's gravity. And Lon says, well, 
what if we take a shuttlecraft? And Pike is like, that sounds like a suicide mission. He's like, she's like, listen, you don't have to even order anyone to go. She'll go. And Spock says, I'll go too. Or to put it in plain English, you'll need backup. So Pike says, take the Galileo. There's a throwback to the Galileo. The uh, Galileo 7 was a TOS episode. And the Galileo was seen in at least one, if not more, Trek movies. Uh, the Galileo, the most famous uh, shuttle pad, shuttle on the Enterprise. Apparently it was there in Pike's time. We've got a Hora and Hammer. Oh no. We've got the, 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 it's just the camera going in circles. So now we've got Spock and Laan is, is in the, sh the shuttle. She says the SS Pugent Sound. It was the name of their colony ship. And she remembers little flashes of light here and there. Uh, she's seen those lights before. Uh, so uh, we also saw the picture of what turns out is her older brother. She's like, it feels like I know something, something she should know about the lights. And Spock is like, understandable. And she's like, you can help me. If you Vulcans, Vulcans can do. And he's like, mind melds are not shortcuts. And he's resurfering hidden memories can be painful, even dangerous. And like that's going to stop her, Spock. She's like, I can't keep running. I've got to take this risk. So Spock is like, okay. He doesn't even, doesn't even ask, okay. You can tell this is not, not his first mind meld. He steps up. He puts his hands on her head. My mind to your mind. My thoughts to your thoughts. And she's got a mind meld going. And you see two kids running. And why is there fire? Like there, This is a colony ship. It's like their colony is built out of wood. Their colony is built out of wood. And there's... And there's fire used to light the walls. Oh, it's a Gorn. It's a Gorn breeding room. So the Gorn have them in wooden huts. But they're using fire to light the huts. And it's a breeding area. So you're saying the Gorn, what? Regularly put their babies up again in, in wooded fire burning Oh my God, I, can't, I don't even want to say it because of, you know, recent events. But this is a tragedy waiting to happen. And we're supposed to hate the Gorn. I don't hate them that much. It's not their fault they're hungry. Humans just look delicious. I know they look delicious. I don't blame them. They just got to eat. If we were, anyway. So Laan and her brother are running. Um, actually, you know what? Laan doesn't know. Laan, the only reason Laan knows how to, uh, how to speak, um, Gorn is that her brother figured it out. Her brother gives her a notepad where he, he, he figured out some of their simple words like weak and help. And he's like, he watched them. He knows how they talk to each other. So he gives this book to Laan. And that's the only reason she knows what the lights mean. Which I'm surprised they're letting a male character get some credit. Of course, he has to die. He can't be allowed to live. But at least he gets some credit. I mean, the only people who really know he exists is Laan and Spock. Uh, but apparently uh, he he figured out enough that she's going to use the lights to to tell uh, tell the other Gorn ship 
to destroy the first. And, and he tells her to run, and she does. She's running. She accepts it. You're welcome. Thank you, my brother, for you know giving your life for me. So now Spock is like, your subconscious hit a boundary. She's like, the light states, my brother showed me what they mean. And now, now she's hearing Michael Burnham. I love you too. No, if you want me to like Star Trek, you've got to cut out Michael Burnham. You can't bring her up. This is the fourth episode. And at least the second time, if not third, that I'm hearing Michael Burnham's voice. It might be the fourth. You cannot bring Michael Burnham up. You cannot make good track and re re go back to Discovery. No, she didn't sacrifice herself for him. She sacrificed herself because she's a fucking idiot. And she hardly sacrificed. She's in the future living it up. She became captain. She found a boyfriend. She, she all the best things. Okay? Her friend Tilly became a tree. Oh no, she became a teacher. She just loves the tree. It, I don't know. But Mike, no, they didn't sacrifice themselves for Spa. Stop saying that. So, Spock says, oh, it's a good plan. Or his mind meld reminded him of risk taking. So, they use what? A laser pointer that the front of the, the front of the shuttle has. And, uh, she, she sprays the lights onto a Gorn ship. And of course, the other Gorn ship doesn't detect the fact that the shuttle's there. They just thought that it was the, they thought the first Gorn ship was saying, Hey buddy, could you kill us? Because we've been overrun by humans. And they're like, sure buddy, I don't have to double check that. We'll just blow you up. And without any, without any confirmation, they destroy one of the Gorn ships. Oh. Uh, well, the second Gorn ship. Um, so, Hema, uh, Hema needs to keep, keep talking with Ahura. And Ahura is like, so why, why are you in Starfleet? I thought you guys were pacifists. And he says, I actually wanted to be a botanist. But don't, don't, he's like, I will, I will defend Starfleet's ideals. But, uh, there's a, two ways of looking at pacifism. Uh, He's like, it's not that I won't fight at all. I will fight uh, for every natural thing in the natural universe. What's in the natural universe? So does that mean, like, if, if, an, if a species is endangered, you won't fight for it because it wasn't supposed to live? I mean, I don't understand. I mean, you could say, like, Picard... And he wouldn't help a species. He wouldn't help anybody, you know, because their planet was about to blow up from volcanoes. That that was their natural fate was to die. So is that what he's saying? Or he just will help? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, um... Laan and Spock are back on the Enterprise. Um, so now they want to use, could they use the black hole's gravity to slingshot out of the nebula or whatever? And Spock is like, uh, they, uh, they may see him. The Gorn ship may see him. And he's like, what's gravitational red shifting? He's like, well, to somebody outside a black hole, it would appear that the object has stopped right outside a black hole. And uh, Lon says the only time the Gorn stop hunting is when they think the hunted are dead. So now she's like, you're going to drop the A350, which is the atomic bomb that for some reason 
they're working on in uh, in the main cargo bay. So everybody reminds Pike that this is a crazy idea. And Pike says, it's going to hold. And he tells Ortega, if anybody could surf a wave on a black hole, it's her. Anyway, Pike tells everybody to strap in. Anyway, so this really reduces the... Uh, so a, a scene ago, Ohora and um, Hammer were saying they've got to... Uh, they've got to uh they've got to open the cargo bay to space they've got to empty the cargo bay to save everybody but ohora's like but we're in here and hammer's like yeah that's unfortunate so you think they're going to sacrifice themselves for their shipmates uh but no they have ev suits they have like a 10 minute conversation about what do you think death is when they're not going to die. Everybody knows they're not going to die. You put on your EV suit. There's no reason you would die. I don't even get why this is scary. Some guy says brace for heavy gravity. Pike opens a channel ship wide. And he puts attention. Captain. Earlier today, blah, blah, blah. We are reminded about the course of exploration that nine people died. We've got a nurse chapel working or walking around. Um, for some reason, sick bay systems are working again, although we were given no reason for why they would be. Uh, we do not give in to fear, says uh, Captain Pike. I do not believe today will be our last mission. And July 4th will be Independence Day. No, I'm sorry. Wrong movie. But you get the point. He gives a inspiring speech. Um, the Gorn ship and the Enterprise are just uh, a couple hundred kilometers, not even, a couple hundred meters away from each other. The Enterprise heads towards the accretion disk and the accretion disk is in sight he's like okay now just turn the ship and let go of that thing we've got in the cargo bay and uh that's what they do he says vent the hold and Sp oh, spike spock has to do that for some reason in the hold, they shoot out some uh, wire to hold on to. Of course, Hammer's uh, wire fails. So Ohora, Ohora has to hold him. Uh, it's okay, Hammer. You're being saved this week. Ohora is going to hold you in place. Um, Ortega's is bringing them out of the uh, out of the uh, accretion disk. Uh, however, it appears that there's been a giant explosion, and of course, two seconds after the giant explosion, with zero zero, what's that? Zero 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 investigation, the Gorn ship leaves. And the Enterprise comes out just after the Gorn ship leaves. Had they stuck around for even a minute, they would have they would have taken the Enterprise. So Pike says, "Call main cargo bay," and he's like, "Kimmer, Kimmer, are you there, Kimmer?" And all they're getting is is broken static. It's like Pike to main cargo bay. Hammer, Hammer, are you there? Uh, report. And he's like, oh my God, Hammer's dead. Hammer's dead. And he doesn't say it, but he starts crying. He, he, he looks down. He knows. He knows Hammer's dead. He feels terrible. He says, Lom, 
Send a recovery team. Oh, Ohora gets on. We're here, sir. We're still here. Yay, everybody's clapping. The entire bridge is really happy because they all love Uhura. And I guess they all love uh, Kim Kimmer, whatever the hell his name is. Uh, Hammer, Hammer. They all love Hammer, the a and uh, Pike says to Lion, that was quite a miracle because earlier he told her uh, that the crew, if the crew expect to die, they will die. But that was just a miracle. If you have the crew expect a miracle, they might just get one. She's like, but what about next time? The Gorn are coming out closer and closer. What about next time? And Pike says, well, next time we'll be ready for them. They won't take us by surprise. Is that like true? Because if you guys never encounter the Gorn again, then it's still bad because you weren't ready for them. And the entire population of Cestus III was brutally murdered. And that is canon. And they never knew who did it until Captain Kirk found out it was the Gorn. We didn't know of a species named the Gorn. We didn't know that there were crocodile-like species out there. We didn't have a clue. We didn't know any of this. But of course, in this world, we knew. We knew. Um, and this is the end. And of course, uh, La'an finally puts on her 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 um, her badge that uh, honors the whatever thirty three that she was on. Lon does a going away log where some of the crew gave their lives, and we have one, two, three, four. I believe there are seven torpedoes representing seven Starfleet officers and two civilians who died. She says, but we survived. But here's the deal. The biggest, most unforgivable, the biggest, most unforgivable has not, has not been addressed yet. The biggest, most unforgivable sin has not been addressed yet. Do you remember what it is? They went down to the planet. There was a dog. They left the fucking dog on a planet locked in a house. Locked in a house to die. They left the dog to die. How do you fuck that up? All this episode, I was like, listen, if the last scene, the last scene, they go down and they bring the dog up. Okay? They they end this episode on a good fucking note. Somebody beams down, or, or uh, Pike beams down, or anybody beams down, and they bring the dog up to the ship. And maybe it's the little girl's dog. Maybe it's a random dog. Maybe one of the crew take the dog. Maybe there's just going to be a dog on the bridge. I don't know. I don't care. You know, if they said, we got to take this to Starbase, whatever. Somebody goes and saves the fucking dog. Is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask for Starfleet officers in Captain's Pike Day to save a dog? No. This dog is going to die. It had already been alone for two days. How much longer can it survive? Nobody gave a fuck about the fucking dog. Ah, it hurts. This is not the Starfleet I grew up loving. The Starfleet I grew up on wouldn't leave a dog behind. They certainly wouldn't leave people behind, but they wouldn't leave a dog behind either. 
poor sassy. I can't. I can't. This is. I give this episode a one out of ten. And sassy, you don't even want to know what she writes. Like. With that, kapla, and we'll see what's up next week for episode one, episode five, coming up next week. Kapla all, bird out. <laughs>